Hello and welcome back to another episode of Father and Sunday's The Unexplainable Guide to Absolutely Nothing. Uh, this week is episode 11 and we are talking about books, aren't we, Dad? We certainly are. We might even have written a few short stories at the end of this podcast. Yeah, so stick around if you want to hear more and especially stick around to the end. Right, so here we go. So everything all right with you, Connor? Yeah, all goods with me. All goods with me. All goods with, are with you. All are the goods are with me. <laughs> yeah. Now, good week here. Yeah? yeah, good yeah. week. Yeah. At time recording, this is back on the weekends, a long weekend as well. Well, yeah, for some. Well, I suppose it is a bit It's still a long for weekend for you, it's just longer. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair enough. Okay, right, so, books. Well, before we get into it, I wanted to say something briefly. Oh, go on. Well, you know, last week, I think we said something about we're on Spotify now. Or I don't yes. actually know if we did say we we're on Spotify, but by the time that episode's come out, we are on Spotify. We've been on Spotify for about a week now. Right. Not only that, we are now on Amazon Music as well. Right. You can find us on Amazon Music. You can even find an Alexa app, Alexa Skill. She's not paying attention to me. She flashed in. Oh, she's trying to talk. No. And she ignore us anyway. Um, yeah, so you can download a skill, so you can set it up to go onto your flash briefings. If you ask for your flash briefings, then it will play you our most recent podcast. If I knew what a if flash briefing was, I might do that. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to add. Oh right, okay, okay. I just no, wanted to good. say that we're now on Spotify. I thought that was great. Yeah, there is something rather bizarre about. I use Spotify quite a lot. Going, I make up a lot of playlists. And going on there and seeing our, well, our cartoon faces, caricatures are on there. It's a bit weird with everything else that's on there. But, yeah, good thing. Right. There was also... Oh, no. You I've got, did, I've got you just trying to wind me up now. Well, you know we spoke about locations a couple of weeks ago. Uh, can't remember Or that. a week ago or something like that. We spoke about who's listening to our podcast in different places. Oh, where that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Got a couple more to add to the list. Well, you didn't tell me about this, so I haven't been able to practice my language skills. Go on. I did tell you about this. See, but actually, I don't want you to do all the accents, if that's okay. Yeah, all right. I, um, this will be evident when she... So we've got Belgium on our list now. Yep, okay, cool. And India. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But that's that's all I wanted to add, which I thought was interesting. That, that is. It's, it's bizarre... It's uh, interesting and to coin a phrase, it's crazy. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, I've stopped you getting into the actual podcast twice now. Yeah. We're doing like a bit hesitant countdown. now whether to go for it or not. We're just going to Yeah, if you can in. go. Yeah. Okay. Actually, if you uh, if you want to hold off a moment, no, right. go. Go. This Actually, week go. we are going to we've we're trying to think of the subjects we want to talk about. And we're going to talk about books this week now. Again, a bit like with films. Sorry, we might have to briefly describe what a book is, uh, because what to the younger viewers, twenty twenty one, yeah, viewers, yeah. Do you don't you don't view this? No, I'm, no. I know it, I'm getting a little bit <laughs> confused yeah. about the whole process. Um, right, okay. Can it, you a, describe a book? Can you describe a book for me, please? But a book is um, like a catalogue. Well, no, nope. don't use catalogs anymore. No, nope. they won't know what you're talking about. Uh, a book is like um, the internet. Yeah, they use the internet, but there's lots of pages like the internet. Yep. There's specific. You can go and look at specific things like the internet, and they've got some really lovely covers to them as well. And you find them in libraries. <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, I had to sneeze. <laughs> Bless you. Um, you, you find them in libraries and um, holding up tables and in your loft, in your grandparents' loft. Um, it's and a bit like bookshops. Net, it's a bit like Netflix, but made with trees, isn't it? Well, you could have said that at the beginning and stopped yeah. me floundering around Goodness. trying to find out. What didn't know. Did anyway, I? You, if you don't know what books are, and I can't can't believe you don't know what books are, then you need to go and find out because that's just appalling. Because we, we've really that's described no, books, no but we didn't really describe not... Bigfoot, did we? Well, we did describe Bigfoot quite in detail, I think. But yeah. um, anyway, 
Oh, I can't wait to get on to the music week then when we talk about long players. <laughs> right. Books. So, it's even before again, my, this my. is a huge sort of uh, subject. Uh, could be... Well, I'm, I'm sure there are podcasts that are just devoted to books and, and talking about books. We were just going to talk about some of our favourite books or books that we remember from We're going to do childhood. all of what those podcasts do, but in a matter of an hour. Yeah, so we won't really. We'll skim everything and it won't be, a, it won't be any <laughs> won't substance be no to any use of it. to this. No, exactly. So that, that's what all of these podcasts are there for, 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 for nothing, really. Um, so I thought what we could do is a bit like when we did the films week, uh, just build up an atmosphere about this. So, um, unbelievably, NASA's, NASA got in touch, didn't they? And we've both what, been... Is that them on the phone now? <laughs> no, what? what? Bit... Yeah, I can hear the phone ringing. Yeah, have... Hang well, on, shall I pick it up? It was a while ago. Can I be NASA and I'll be... It... Hello? <laughs> Hello? Who's this? Uh, this is Dad. <laughs> Hello, Dad. Can you put down the phone because I'm trying to talk. Oh, now. OK. Bye. All right. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so NASA's been in touch. They want us for their space program. We're, we're being sent up in uh, one of their shuttle things to the International Space Station. The right? We're going to do some experiment, experiments up there while they're with, you know, ants or whatever they do when they're there. Um, fantastic. We've been through the training. We're on our way, right? Um, you might be able to hear those sort of booster rockets going off oh yeah I think I've just heard them yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and we're about to go in orbit the G-force is starting to take effect so if my voice goes is in G-force is in the uh, the film with the guinea pigs or? yeah because yeah, that, yeah. that's yeah. what one of the things I've brought with me um, yeah. <laughs> so you know we're going to go up there we're going to be there for you know about six months I don't know if you knew that but we're going to be there for six months so we, we need things to entertain us you know being up in space is not you know it's not a breeze you know, it's not going to be easy. There's no breeze in space. No, exactly. So we need distractions, you know, and, um, you know, the, all, all the other people from the, around the world that are going to be in the International Space Station with us, they'll all have things to do, you know. They'll have books and um There'll be a Canadian music. playing guitar. Yeah, guitars and, and uh, you know, any, anything. Anyway, so um, we're now up in the... Space station. Wow, that was quick. It, it don't take too long now no. <laughs> to do these things. Yeah, so we're up in there, right? There might be a few noises, what you like know, to, bleepy noises, yeah, and things like that. You know, you never know. Um, and also, you know, I can't. We've got to be a little bit careful of space debris. Debris. Do you know? I can't say that, can I? Every time. Last time I said that, I couldn't do debris. it. Debris. 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 A bit anyway. like you're getting a bit cheese. Debris. No. Uh, I <laughs> thought they said in NASA training no bad jokes. You're not allowed to take out any bad jokes up into uh, the space station. So, so um, really, you need to open an airlock and throw that joke out where it that, deserves to be. So the the one joke book I brought up, I've got to get rid of that. Oh, is that if you brought yeah. up a joke book? Oh dear. No, well, well, you, maybe maybe keep that. Anyway, so there might be some noises and all that as we're going on. But what book? Have you brought or books? Have you brought with you that's going to get you through this six months? We're going straight in with it, yeah. Well, why not? All right. Well, the thing is with me, yeah, is in recent years, I've read a couple of books. I will be honest, not read loads. Well, one how to read books, yeah. and then another one. <laughs> Book books for dummies. <laughs> I read a, uh, yeah, in my childhood. There was uh, some re books I really loved and kept up with, but in more recent years, mm -hmm. the books that really captured my interest, and this is going to really upset people who really like books and reading, is um, is the Star Wars novels. All right. Well, you know, just because you're, in you're interested in that sort of thing, so there's no problem. Yeah, there. and they've, they've just really, really drawn me in. Uh, spe specifically, there was Ahsoka, which I read. And there's also been recently uh, Star Wars The High Republic, and that's not just necessarily the one book, but that's like multiple books in a series. And again, that's another thing that I really love is when I'm a big fan of when things all come into one, hence the reason I quite like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. 
and and stuff like that. So okay, no, well, that's, no, that's so, fine. So, so when there's something like Star Wars that you can relate back to the films, you can re- re- relate back to anything else, and um, and and stuff like that. That's that's what I really love. So I was just having a little yeah. sip of my recycled wee wee there. Yeah, <laughs> so was like another one. So I was moving my head away from the mic so we didn't have to hear you drink the recycled. Oh, right, wee sorry. Wee. Yeah, sorry. Um, about but that. yeah, there's, so I I really like those kind of books and and the High Republic and all that kind of stuff when everything all intertwines. Mm-hmm. That's what I really love. And and when I was a kid, I used to really love uh, the Cherub books. Which oh yeah yeah that was so, sort of uh, um, and the Henderson boys Robert much more he used to write books that were like children secret agent spy things and actually he's just had um, I literally saw this yesterday he's got a they've got a Netflix series that's going to be coming out which is Cherub which growing up is actually quite disappointing right. because growing up I wanted to I wanted to be in like the film. If they made a film, I wanted to be the lead in the film. So you, you might have, nowadays, you're maybe, and I, and I hesitate to say this because I don't think you should be too old to do anything, except like mess yourself or something like that. But Well, you can get to an age and start doing well, that again. You regress, yeah, it goes back again. Um, but um, it's a shame that didn't come out when you were interested in the books as well. Yeah. Because probably now if you I'd, look at it a bit nostalgically, but it won't be I really for you. I still will watch it though. You're not the target audience now, are you? Well, it's aimed at like kind of pre-teens to teens kind of that kind of age anyway it had quite a lot like uh drug use violence uh sexual kind of things in there as well because it was kind of like the, the whole, we the let whole you read it the whole the thing was the character was starting off young and you literally went through his teenage years with him yeah so you, he discovered all these things and you discover all these things what stuff. like harry potter Ah, yes, I've got a crowbar to Harry Potter in quite early in the conversation. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Um, so, yeah. So, I used to love those. And I actually probably will watch that because it was really good. But they were they were also quite emotional. Like, they dealt with death quite a lot in those books as yeah. well. well like, the Henderson Boys was set in World War Two, And that one was very much, like, for for example, there's you read through the book and, and one of the books... Like when you when you get like a TV series or something like that, someone might be written out of it because the actor no longer wants to do it. But when a character is written out of a book, that means that the they've they've written like it's a bit mm. more dramatic. Yeah, because it's not just based on the actor or something like that. And they wrote out um, like in one of the books, one of them had a sister, and because it's set in like World War Two and stuff like that, I think um, the Nazis got her, like right at the beginning of one of the books, right. like blew up okay. a nunnery, which she was. In and stuff like that. Well, that was a bit unnecessary, wasn't it? If you're going to blow up something and then blowing up a nunnery. Yeah, but there's like children spies in there, so. Oh, yeah. Well, I know they've done Young James Bond, haven't they? Um, I think, is it Charlie Hickson that uh, writes them? I might have got the name wrong. I'm notorious for that. But anyway, I think yeah, they've done quite a lot of them now. So there is, an, there is a sort of market for that sort of thing. So, no, that's a good one. I like that. So, right, well, that that's kind of me then. I mean, I like those books. There's other books I like as well. But how about you? What what book do you take? It's a difficult one because, um, again, a bit like when we were choosing films to watch, um, it's lots and lots of books that, I mean, when you sit there and you start thinking and you go through them and you go, oh, yeah, what about that one? I suppose it's something that should be in your mind all, all the way through. So, sorry, am I... <laughs> Look like you're falling asleep then. No, I I, I need to do like because <clears throat> I've been speaking quite a lot. I felt like I really need to do a really heavy breath, but I didn't want to do it directly into the mic. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I think I come to the conclusion that I would take or have with me uh, the complete Sherlock Holmes. Um, it's weird with with books because there's some books that I've bought or borrowed or you know got out of the library and read and then subsequently library? Uh? library library yeah not given back and got fine um there's some books that i've got like that and then gone on to watch the film or an adaptation of it or something like that and they're very much linked in with this so i think i can't deny the fact that i read all of the Sherlock Holmes books. Uh, some, some of them are quite short stories. 
Um, there's obviously the famous ones that people have heard of, like the Hand of the Baskervilles, uh, Study in Scarlet, you know. Um, so there, there, there's those uh, those ones that people are aware of. There's lots of other ones as well, and they're all, all written. That quite often when you read a book that uh, has been written at a certain time, uh, people always cite, you know, reading Shakespeare or even to a certain degree reading Dickens books and that the language in them is sometimes quite, especially Shakespeare, is quite difficult to to grasp and get hold of as you're reading them and can distract you from the actual content of the book, right? So with, with Sherlock Holmes, it's very easy reading. Um, the relationships there... I probably love the books even more because then I've gone on to watch um, a big fan of Jeremy Brett in the series that they did for Garada. Um, and also the more recent ones with Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman in it for Sherlock. You know, because the, there's been so many adaptations, there's been obviously film as well. Elementary as well. No? Oh, yeah, yeah, the American version and such. But um, I just love it. Apparently it's just like it. so clever. Um, the actual. You, it's very easy to read something and and think, oh, great, you know, yeah, it's great, it's entertaining, all the rest of it. When you when you have something like that and anything to do with, uh, uh, I mean, obviously they're crime novels and and uh, but they're so elaborate, some of them. So, uh, so Arthur Conan Doyle wrote them all. Has to have not. He's not just a writer. He's he's been able to. Um, think up these scenarios, these really difficult, strange, uh, complex scenarios within these stories in order for that to work. And I think from the point of view of there's still a huge amount of people um, who, if you ask them about certain people, you know, say uh, who's real, who's not, a lot of people think Sherlock Holmes was real and Dr. Watson. They they thought they existed and obviously they never existed. Um, and I think that probably is testament to how um, popular the books are, what a myth it created around that. So I, I'd still enjoy them. I go back and read them. Um, I certainly watch, watch the adaptations of the books. I, I love it. So it's Sherlock Holmes. Hasn't Robert Dan Jr. got another one coming out as well? Yeah, I think they're doing a third film. Um, I, they're okay. Um, but I think they've been done so well with other people that, you know, I kind of, I steer towards that. I steer towards the TV dramas more than I would do to the films. But they're still Sometimes watchable. Sometimes I think the TV, the TV stuff can be better because whereas the film has to do it in like, an hour and a bit or something like that. I mean, sometimes they've got a whole episode will be a story, but they can have everything flow a lot more and they can essentially have hours worth yeah. more of a thing, which, because if you bear in mind how long it takes to read a book, and it, it's, it's... Especially you. Excuse me? How rude. <laughs> you said you've read two books in a in, in matter of your last few years, didn't you? Uh, no, I've probably read more than that. I just some of them I can't really remember. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Um, I tried reading The Hobbit, and just as much as I like the story and the films, and I actually am listening to the audio book. Yeah, but when it comes to reading it, it just doesn't grasp my attention enough because it's I don't know. Well, it I just think... goes off topic. Yeah, we've we've spoken in the past about the singing aspect of it, haven't we? Oh. Um, well, look, uh, yeah, I was going to, uh, we'll, we'll cover this now then because I was going to speak about this. Oh, sorry for that. Right. I have Kaboom. read, I love Tolkien. Love it. Don't get me wrong. I think it's fantastic. Um, certainly, uh, um, I read the books numerous times before they even thought, of, well, obviously there was, a, there was a cartoon or animation a long, long while ago. Uh, but, um, before they really started thinking about films and such. Weren't Amazon making The Lord of the Rings? They are making a series now, yeah. But So I read The Lord of the Rings and I read The Hobbit loads of times. The Hobbit I find, uh, I love them 
and The Hobbit I find easy to get. It's a shorter book anyway for a start. And the Lord of the Rings is... I do love the fact um, that all the mythology behind it, you're, you're hearing a story all the way through, but you're also hearing how we got to that point from all different directions. So all the characters are all... You get a backstory almost for them all and, and what has happened, why they're there. The thing, <laughs> the thing that we've... Um, and I have been listening at the moment. I'm listening to the Lord of the Rings audio books. Um, when I read the books, I kind of skim sometimes. I've got to be honest. If I when I get to the ver the verses of songs, sometimes when you know the story as well so well, you can well, skim it. Yeah, I get. I guess that's the that's that's the way it is. But it, I mean, for example, I've just listened to a particular bit within I'm nearly at the end of The Return of the King and it's not a musical uh, it's a great story great description of everything but there's one particular point and I think it sums it up for me is when they're all it's been after a battle and they're all in a particular place and then Legolas is going to bed or going to I don't think he sleeps, but he, he's going to rest. What, as in he doesn't sleep at all? Do I elves think he goes, up, no, I can, goes and wanders somewhere, but they're all going to but bed. But do elves sleep? Bitten, I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. They're a bit like cows, they have to lay down and dream. Or, I can't. Anyway, but instead of just saying, you know, um, you know, I, I don't even mind if he, he come up with a little bit like sort of, I'm, I'm shattered from all this middle-earth mayhem, um, I'm off to bed now. But he sings a song that lasts for about what would be three pages about going to bed. Just get on with it. Do you not do go that every to bed night? Or don't go to bed. I sing a song every night as I go to bed. It goes, time for bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? yeah? Yeah. I think I've heard you singing that. Yeah. I've got to go to sleep now. Oh. Night. Oh dear. Yeah, I hear the night bit. Yeah. And I do that for three night, night. whole pages. Don't let the bell rugs bite. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, so I look. Unbelievable book. Fantastic. It's one of the loves of my life. Books. Books. But there are pot to points where I think, oh really? <laughs> yeah, see I've got I'm listening to the audio book that um Andy Circus did on Audible. Oh yeah, yeah. Um and He's to be fair. He's really good when it comes to like having the golem bits. Oh well, yeah, no, he, he is golem, so um, that's, I, that's really the, good. But Rob Rob Inglis, I think, who's Australian guy, um, he's done the ones that I'm listening to, and he's really good. No, and, Talking and about audiobooks because it's kind of within it as well. When when you've when you've done the Harry listen to Harry Potter ones, that's Stephen Fry doing it. Yeah, and whenever I walked in, whenever I walked into you listening to Harry Potter, sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? Um, uh, <laughs> the way Stephen Fry tells the story and when he does like Hagrid's voice and stuff like that, yeah, he's just really good at that. Well, he, he does a Hagrid. I mean, hence really the reason well. he does so many audible stuff. But, but it, there's something in it that really bugged me all the way through because again, I've listened to all of those. I've read all the books, but I've listened to all of those. Sure. And he calls <laughs> Malfoy. He doesn't call him Malfoy, and I don't know whether I've been thinking that his name's Malfoy all these years and it's not. Be pronounced as it's slightly different. I cannot think what it is, but go back and listen, and uh, and it really started to irritate me. But I mean, don't they say Malfoy in the um, in the films? Films they though. do. So yeah. it's obviously his pronunciation of it. But yeah, yeah, it bugged me a little bit. But another national treasure. Can't say anything about Stephen Fry. Anyway, so you mentioned that. Yes, there's you know no, the the whole point is not everybody's going to like everything. And don't get me wrong. I love those books, but those bits of them do drive me around the bend a bit. So, that's Sherlock Holmes. Oh, is it the end of Sherlock Holmes? Well, yeah, because we went off to topic, really. Yeah, yeah no, right. Sherlock Holmes is definitely one for me, yeah. What about, have you got a second one, or have I got another one? That well, I, I kind of said a number of them, didn't I? You did, you sort of brought them all together, didn't you? Brought them all okay, together then, so a, another one that I like. America. And I tried not to be obvious about this, but it is a book that I've gone back to a number of times. Is it Jurassic Park? No, oh. no. So, I Is it Biff, Chip and Kipper and the Magic Key? Huh? Biff, Chip and Kipper and the Magic Key? 
No, no, it's not that one. No. Oh, I wish I'd have thought of that. And no, I, I don't, as far as anything's concerned, I'm not a big fan of gore or or horror of that sort, right? But I do like ghost stories. Um, I love that sort of side of it. Now, obviously, some of it touches a little bit on, gets a little bit grim at times in it, but I can cope with that. But as long as it's not all the way through and that's not what it's like written around. So James Herbert. Um, Sorry, when, whenever someone's called Herbert, <laughs> I just find it think a funny a family name. guy. <laughs> no, I don't think of that. No, I just think, oh, you go, oh, you Herbert. You're you're a little Herbert, you cheeky thing. You know that I've ever heard that. Have I ever heard that? Don't people call people Herbert Sorry, when they're... Sorry, i to have another drink. That's not even recycled, that one. <laughs> oh, that's just straight. <laughs> that's just straight. Um... No, so James Herbert. So Jay Herb, James Herbert, uh, sadly not with us anymore, but wrote a series of books. Some of them are, I think I'll probably lean towards the ones that are, as I say, the ghost story ones. He did, a, he did some that were around, well, he did The Rats and Domain, which are quite depressing stories when you read them. But he also did sort of uh, Moon, um, The Haunting, and... One in particular is The Magic Cottage. It's probably not, I don't think it's the most famous one of his books, but it's its my favourite one of his books. And it's, and it's again, of an age, there's a couple that are moving away from the city. Uh, she's an illustrator um, and he's a musician. He's a session musician. And they move to this idyllic little cottage, which is supposed to be idyllic, but there's a... Good word, idyllic. Yeah, there's a, there's a cult a little way down the road in this big house. There's lots of things happen. Lots of things happen around it. It's it's a kind of combination of horror and magic within it. So certain things Ooh, within magic. that, yeah, <laughs> certain things with it happen within that cottage. And it, and again, I read it a little while ago, and it's slightly dated with its references, but it just builds and builds and builds. And there's certain bits in it, and the d- descriptions within it. There's a certain bit where he sees out onto the lawn and there's a figure looking at and it and it still freaks me out now when I read it. I know it's coming up in it and it's just the way it builds and the way it moves around. But it's a, it's a really good story. Thoroughly recommend it to anybody. Um, James Herbert, I like James Herbert's writing. Um, it, as I say, some of it is quite grim. Some of it does get quite descriptive around certain elements of what's happening, which perhaps I could do without. But on the whole... It's a bit like a lot of people like, I um, mean, obviously Stephen King is a huge um, yeah. Yeah, force. Um, some of his ones I like, but there's, the, I mean, he's written all sorts of genres as well, hasn't he? Didn't he go into the sort of sci- science fiction side of things as well? But, um, but they're the sort of uh, books that I can... You know, I can read it. it. Of all the books that he wrote, it I've I've read a couple of times, and I do find that quite quite. A but gripping you wouldn't story. really watch the films, would you? No, no, but I wouldn't watch the films, not at all. No, I wouldn't be interested in doing that because it just wouldn't be. And and to be honest, um, I'm a bit like that with stuff anyway. I can't really cope with uh, watching stuff. I watch Salem's Lot and uh, the TV adaptation. I had to buy it and then put it away. It's a bit like Joey in Friends when he puts books in the in the fridge. That's what I do. If there's something like that, I've got things that I've never watched, and I kind of buy them because I own them, and I can control when I see them then. Fair enough. <laughs> so, but they frighten the bejeebas out of me. Um, so they're, they're, they're the books. There's there's plenty of others. I mean, there are even Shakespeare ones I like, Lewis Carroll. Um, You're just trying to sound fancy by saying Douglas Shakespeare Adams. Uh, no, no, I really struggle with this about the ones that I particularly like. Oh, one thing is key for me is illustrations as well. I know it's a bit having pictures in books, but they do set them off. That's why you like that pop-up book. Oh, the pop-up books are great. If they could do more books as pop-up books, that would be fantastic. But uh, Sherlock Holmes has, has got some incredible illustrations in it. Certainly the Alice books, the Lewis Carroll books, you know, some of the illustrations in there I absolutely love. I always find when there's a map at the front of the book, that makes it more exciting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Tolkien books have got the Silmarillion. That's got, 
Yeah, I went to the poo yeah, and <laughs> yeah, no, a great one. Um, from them sort of books, though, from the childhood, I always used to like Shirley Hughes books. And I didn't realise until uh, some time later that she actually illustrated her own books. That was the key thing I liked about them. But uh, she illustrated her own books. In fact, she started as an illustrator and then went into writing her own books. Um, she did the Alfie sort of series of books. Um, but certainly from when I was younger... Uh, she also did Dogger, which hasn't really, yeah. <laughs> I pulled a face then for anyone listening. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's perfectly innocent, but uh, perhaps she wouldn't have picked that title now. <laughs> Maybe not. No. But then, you know, there was some, I mean, it's a, children's books as well. There's some fantastic children's books. Um, You know, the, the writing for children as well now, from the likes of Harry Potter is the obvious ones, but there's some just really well-crafted stuff and really targeted at certain ages as well, which I think are great. And some of the the younger books um, try and, uh, like a lot of TV programmes, they're on a couple of levels. So when you undoubtedly have to read them about a thousand times to your child, then they're quite funny. They, 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 they're entertaining to you as well. Um, One of the ones you always used to read to me was The Three Little Pigs. Was that entertaining to you? Uh, only because I put on voices and probably made up certain bits of it as well. <laughs> I always remember I don't, Billy I don't, Goat's Gruff, oh, where yeah, yeah. all the people were us. All the goats yes, were us. Yeah. Well, you have to. If you sit there, I think it's really important to read to children. And if you sit there and, it, and you're just going over and over the same things, because children do like repetition, so you would end up doing the same thing over and over again. Just, just, just try and mix it. Why wouldn't you do that? Try and mix it up. Why wouldn't you try and make it entertaining for yourself as well as the person that's listening to it? And you used to enjoy it, didn't you? Yes. 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 The ones I don't like, I mean, Victoria Wood once, I think, uh, made a joke about Mr. Men books um, and uh, saying that, like, Roger Hargreaves, again, who's not with us, I don't believe, anymore, would like sort of squeeze past his typewriter and knock it with his backside and write another Mr. Man book because there was just there's just nothing in them. There's got a great idea of them, but there's just absolutely nothing in the books themselves, you know, and can be quite frustrating from that. But even them, they've actually they've done this with a lot of books now. They've done newer versions of them, so sort of adult books of the Mr. Man. Um, yeah, so that very you know, different. So, no, 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 no. But not not on that score. But just having them about adult things. You see, the, late, the Ladybird books as well do them. The Ladybird books do now things that are hilarious titles to them. You know, really, really funny stuff about Brexit and all this sort of thing. Lady uh, Eagle. Uh, what? Lady Eagle. Yes, yeah, Ladybird to Lady Eagle. No, I don't know. No, no. no. That's they're still called Ladybird. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Maybe not. Because you've got, you got, you got penguin books we've got the puff in yeah. it. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they have got those variations. Maybe they have. I might have missed that. But they, they should do ones... They should redo them now for the um, pandemic. I think they're missing a trick if they don't have uh, a Mr. Isolation or yeah. uh, Little Miss Work From Home or <laughs> something yeah. like that. Yeah. Any more? Uh, I'm going to push you. Uh, uh, Mr. Conspiracy Theory. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one could work. Uh, Little Miss Banana Bread. <laughs> um, Mr. Zoom. <laughs> and Harry Potter and the Five G Tower. And I don't want to be don't, no. So I, if I was to say Little Miss Online Shopper, so Miss Little Miss Online Shopper and Mr. Online Shopper. Let's not get. Um, why is it Little Miss and then Mr. I don't know. It was always that. It, it just well, it was always Mister Men. The Little Miss came a bit later on, I think, for the fact they thought they would widen the market. How do you make more Mister Men without Little Misses? Uh, yeah, that grow up to be Misses. <laughs> yes, <laughs> or Ms. Yeah, they should do a, a, a divorce. A, yeah, Mister and Mrs. <laughs> divorce. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure they've done that. But the Ladybird books crack me up. They they do. I'll tell you what, I've got a few Ladybird books here, and you can tell me if you think they're real Ladybird books or not. So, the Ladybird Book of the Shed. Yes. Yes, you think that's real? Yes. Yeah, it is real. Yeah, see, I didn't think you'd get that. The Ladybird Book of Embarrassing Rashes. No. Uh, no, it's not true. Um, 
The Ladybird Book of Lighthouses, Lightships and Lifeboats. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> well, that's a bit obvious, that one. Uh, Ladybird Book of Serial Killers. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that is. <laughs> uh, the Lady, uh, Ladybird Book of Understanding Maps. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, Ladybird Book of the Dead. <laughs> yes. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, I was trying to make it up at the time. Yeah. So, but no, I, I would, I would tell anybody if you've got a spare five minutes, look up the new Ladybird Book uh, covers. Uh, they are hilarious. Some of them are absolutely uh, make you cry with laughter. It's well worth a look. We interrupt this podcast for the following public information message. Postmen and postwomen are real people. They are just quietly going about their business. It's not their fault you don't get out of bed until early afternoon. It's not their fault the clothes you order don't fit. They're not mime readers, clairvoyants or magicians. They don't want to be confronted with your ill-kept genitalia. They just deliver your mail and parcels. You can help your postmen and postwomen. Think. Smile. Pants. This public information message was brought to you by postmen and postwomen everywhere. Woohoo! Right, well, for this last bit, yeah, the first bit's gone on for quite a long time now. So I'm we're on sorry, the last I bit. did go on a little bit about things, you know. That's all right, but we've got we decided this week because we're talking about books. We'll we'll give it a go. We'll we'll try and write our own stories because. How hard really can it be? And I think we know the answer to that. We don't do know we? the answer to it. In the fact that you've you've put in a lot of effort into yours. I sat down yesterday, um, as it was Good Friday and I had the day off because obviously this is a week a week ago. Uh, I sat down yesterday and just tried to fit, and it it was really difficult. Uh, and it took me a few hours to put together the nonsense that I put together. Yeah. Um, and really, I, oh, hats off to people that do this for a living. It's just incredible. So uh, if you want a new audio book, we're, pr- we're basically giving you a free audio book, this is. Actually, we could we could end up putting them on as audio books. Are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, um Dad seemed to you. You wrote like a fairly not. I wouldn't say lengthy, but you, it was a bit a bit longer. It's like, six pages. Six pages now. Quite a big print, but big, six pages all the same. Mine are mine are short stories, and mine are very short stories. Mine are uh, whimsical in a way. Whimsical. whimsical. I chucked back. it in. <laughs> chucked it in. Um, but yeah, so my, mine are a bit a bit more. I don't okay. know. Short. Yeah, right. What well, look? Just get this. But, if if I if I start because I've got I've you've got one longer one and I've got three shorter ones. Yeah, show off. Uh, so Go I'm on, gonna, you, you do one of yours then, I'll and do, I'll, I'll have a listen. All right. So I need to get into, need to get into character. Okay. Character. Oh, God, I'm good. Well, this is because I'm doing it like an audio book. Oh, so. oh, okay. All right. Okay. I'm listening. This one is called The Voice in brackets, not the TV show. Okay. This one's a bit more of a. Scary, not scary, but a bit more thriller like. Uh, just, just, yeah. Right. So, we're going to have a little bit of atmosphere here. Mm. I'm, I'm already feeling frightened. Hello? This faint voice. <laughs> oh, I'm really struggling. <laughs> this faint voice could be heard by Justin as he rode the number 25 bus back home after a long day at work. He worked at a knee shop that specialised in selling personalised deodorant cans. Justin looked around the bus. There are only seven other people in the bus but none seemed to be even looking his way or acknowledging his, his existence. <laughs> Three had earbuds in. One was asleep against the window. Two were doing the unrepeatable things at the back of the bus. One was an old lady who had turned her hearing aid off so she didn't have to listen to everybody else. And the last one was too busy shouting abuse at every <coughs> passing pigeon. Nobody on the bus appeared to notice the noise either. Just began to think, oh, it's just his imagination. Hello? 
he heard again. Hello, Justin? He began to come a little bit more worried as the unknown voice appeared to know his name. Can you hear me? The voice called. Uh, hello? He replied with a worried quiver in his voice. I hear you. Great, the voice responded. Now, I need you to do something for me. It's very important. Uh, okay, I'll do anything. Justin was close to tears at this point. I didn't really put the tears in that bit. Uh, I'll do anything. <laughs> Someone or something was clearly trying to communicate with him. What did they want? Did they want him to hijack the bus? Did they want him to complete an elaborate terrorist attack on Parliament? Kill someone? Or worse? It was all about to come up, become clear for Justin. But he wasn't sure he wanted to hear what was about to be said. After a delay, the voice came again. My friend Genia is coming to borrow the blender. Uh, she's trying to have a smoo smoothie detox but wanted to test out ours before she splashed out on one. If she gets back... If she gets there before I arrive home, could you make sure you give her all the pieces as I think some are at back of the cupboard? Thanks, dear. At this point, Justin realised that his mum had called him and he accidentally answered his phone um, as it was in his back pocket. At least he knew he wasn't being contacted by otherworldly beings. For now. The end. Oh. Well, right. So, I think I've been on that bus for a start. Yeah, the number 25... <laughs> Huh? Number 25. Have you been 25. to his niche shop? W Wickford. <laughs> Wickford. Niche shop. It was a very niche shop. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. I did struggle a little bit because you called him Justin. And as soon as you called him Justin, I had a picture of Mr. Tumble. <laughs> and it slightly, slightly took the edge off the, the frightening. Would it help if I went, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that makes it even better. No, <clears> I, I thought, you know. You, you're thinking, oh no, he's going to have to kill everyone. No, well, I it's thought just that's the way he was going to go. go. I thought he was going to slaughter everybody on the bus. No, um, uh, you know, I decided I, to throw in extra details that weren't necessary as well, like yeah, the fact that he was returning off. from his job from a which really had no relevance. Yeah, to it, but all the man shouting the pigeons. Yeah, but it's all about that. It's all about creating an atmosphere. Yeah, creating a scene for See, people. If you were watching something, <clears throat> all of those things would just be happening. I mean, maybe you wouldn't know his job, but all those things would just be happening. Yeah, but. I You'd need see to the unmentionable the things people were doing yeah. on the back of the bus, yeah. 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 All right. We weren't meant to mention those. No, oh, okay. They were unmentionable. So what did, what did you enjoy it though, yeah? I, I like that, yeah. yeah. I like that. I'm starting to get even more nervous about my own one now, so. But what, what the hell, I can't rewrite something now, can I? So, you know. Well, we because I've got two more, do you fancy doing your one next? Okay. okay. Or would you rather me do another one of mine? Uh, do another one of yours and then right. I'll do mine. I'll do the next one because that's that's what that's we just discussed. One, yeah. yeah, and then I'll leave. I'll leave. I'll. I've I've written one kind of bit more thrillery kind of one as well, and and one is a children's story. Yeah. So I'll do the children's story last to try and wind us down. Okay. Yeah, because we've got to go to bed after this yeah, anyway. Yeah, got to so. go to bed. Um. So the next one is called the car journey. Right. Oh, this one is very short. This one's a paragraph. This one's a paragraph long. Huh? <laughs> this one's a paragraph long. Oh right, okay, right. Now go for that then. It was a day that just felt like any other. It was warm, but not too warm. Occasionally there was a breeze, but not all the time. There were some clouds which were white in colour and stood boldly against the blue black drop of the sky. That was backdrop, not black drop. I don't know why it's said black. Yeah, yeah. Um, a father was driving his daughter home from school. But little did he know, the next thing that would be said would change the course of his life forever. My friend had an orthodontist appointment today, the daughter said bravely, keeping her head facing forwards. She forgot about it and had to rebook it. The end. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh dear. That seems to bring back distant memories of yeah. uh, do, do you think a hilarious you, anecdote that I was told once. Yeah, that you, uh, never left me. Do you think that was uh, inspired by anything then? I think it could well be inspired by your a sister. true story. A that true one, story, based yeah. on a true story. That one, yeah, unbelievable. I know you're seeing a Netflix special soon. So, uh, did did at the end of that story, did you find out where she rebooked it or not? No, just no, know so that she's rebooked it. That's the next one. That's the yeah. next chapter. That's the then. sequel. Yeah, because that's uh, you know I had to wait with bated breath for that information myself as well. Do you know yet? Uh, yes, yeah, she did rebook it. Yeah, and, and that was it. Really, all right. She had to cancel it. and She rebooked it. Unbelievable. Has she forgot about it? Yeah. 
Oh, right. Well, no. Okay. That was short. You weren't, yeah, you weren't joking. Yeah, I wasn't there, joking. Was okay. Right. I'm going to do this then. Right. I want to, I'd like to uh, do a few caveats beforehand. I've changed the names of the people in it because I did have certain people's names. Is it to protect in it. their identity or? Uh, kind of. It gets, uh, uh, it's a bit, there's a one potty mouth bit right at the end, but I, I think it's real life and real life. That's what happens in real life. I can't sugarcoat everything. Would you like me to throw in delayed bleeps? If you feel it needs it, then do it. Right. Now, this story is cool. And you're going to hear a paper rustling because I've gone old school and I actually got it printed out. Yeah, I was just reading off a monitor. A slightly disappointing trip to the seaside by David Harding, aged 52 and three quarters. Mm -hmm. One summer's day... Derek was rudely woken up by his three hyperactive and generally tiresome children who, very much against his better judgement, persuaded him that a day out of the seaside would be fun. The children quickly gathered together everything they owned, 95% of which was totally inappropriate for a day at the beach, and piled it up by the front door, ready for someone else to load it into the car. And with Molly... Derek's wife competed in an international online phone app Ludo Championship. It was all down to (laughs) Derek. 45 minutes later, and with the eldest child strapped to the roof rack, they set off for what should have been a 20-minute journey, but actually took an hour and 15 minutes. Due to a stray horse on the dual carriageway, roadworks, and an ill-prepared Renault Espace driver who was playing fast and loose with his petrol gauge. Unfortunately, on arrival to the seaside, it appeared that half the population of the UK had equally annoying children and the place was packed. But after several mumbled swear words and an altercation with an overzealous trumped-up little Hitler or a traffic warden, Derek eventually found a space to park. It was around the same distance to their desired destination as from where they had just driven from, but with the added bonus of an overflowing dog poo bin an empty gas canister and half a seagull just to lift the mood. After wrestling the incomplete seagull from the youngest of his children, he desperately wanted to keep it in case he found the other half, and loaded up like a Peruvian (laughs) pack horse, as the children were already too tired to carry anything unless it was dead, they set off to find a prime spot on the beach. The beach was rammed, but Derek managed to find a small piece of sand for the four of them to set up camp. They were squeezed between two rather rotund terracotta tanned sun worshippers and a large family containing at least a dozen unnecessarily loud kids and several uninterested adults. Derek's own kids were eager to go off and explore the beach and paddle in the water, so had to be wrestled to the ground while he liberally applied suntan lotion to their white bodies. He definitely rubbed factor 30 in three times, although in all the commotion he couldn't be sure that he didn't, it didn't all end up on the same child, who if so would resemble someone about to attempt a swim of the English Channel. But he had tried, and as he often told himself as he sat and sobbed, trying is good enough. <laughs> after s- several shouts of be careful look after each other and for god's sake don't touch anything Derek laid back on an already sandy and lotion covered towel and tried to relax as he looked to his right the party of children had stopped their shouting and instead had moved on to fray rocks at things which included each other and the adults with them on his left, the two sunbathers had turned over and now resembled a couple of weather-beaten leather saddlebags someone had inadvertently left behind by mistake. But the snoring coming from the nearest told him otherwise. Is it possible to relax? he asked himself as he watched his own children carrying water to fill the moat of their freshly built castle. At least they were enjoying themselves. He closed his eyes and felt the warmth of the sun on his face. Derek must have fallen asleep because he woke up with a start and took a few moments to take in his surroundings. He quickly checked on the children, who were not where he had last seen them. A blind panic came over him and he ran to the water's edge, passing the noisy children who had found the cutlery in their picnic basket and had advanced to knife throwing at the youngest of their party, who they'd strapped to a windbreaker. 
Derek started to shout. Page four. Huh? Page four. Page four. <laughs> Derek started to shout. Fanny. Betty. <laughs> Colin. Hang but on they were a nowhere second. to be seen. <laughs> The beach had emptied a bit now, and he couldn't help but notice his other neighbours, the sunbathers, had presumably left, or evaporated. With his heart thumping, he ran up and down the promenade, calling their names. Fanny, Betty, <coughs> Colin, where had they b- disappeared to? They knew not to wander off, but as he desperately searched for his missing children, all the people around him seemed to do was point and laugh at him. What was the matter with these people? Could they not see it was an emergency? He reached for his phone and pulled up a picture of the kids and waved it in front of a nearby deck chair attendant who was packing away some brightly coloured chairs. Have you seen these kids? he shouted in panic. The deck chair attendant looked startled, then confused as he gazed at the picture. Derek looked at his phone and realised in his rush he had swiped onto a picture of a rash he was keeping an eye on. (laughs) He quickly swiped back and showed him a picture of three smiling children sitting on a bench in their nan's garden. Have you seen my kids anywhere? Page five. The deck chair attendant looked at the picture, back at Derek, and started to smile. Oh, yes. I have seen them, as a matter of fact. And he pointed past Derek in the direction he had come from. They're over there. Derek spun round, and there they were, his three kids beaming and clutching ice creams, along with Moddy, their mum. Where have you been? he shouted, half relieved, half angrily. I thought you were busy with the international online phone app Ludo Championship, Molly. (laughs) I I was, Molly replied, smiling. (laughs) But Saeed pulled out after losing most of his counters and Heimlich's signal kept playing up, so I won by default. I thought I'd get the bus down and surprise you, and when I saw you were fast asleep... Is it the number 25? Yeah, I (laughs) thought I'd take the kids to get some ice creams. You could have woke me up. I was worried, Derek said disappointedly. And a little bit angrily by the way I said that then. Um, You look so relaxed, so we left you a note. She pointed to his chest where he saw for the first time a note attached with a safety pin saying, Finished early, getting some ice creams. See you in a bit, M. Derek laughed. Fanny started laughing. (laughs) Betty started laughing. (laughs) Colin started laughing. (laughs) Molly started laughing. (laughs) The deck chair attendant started (laughs) laughing. Everybody stopped laughing and looked at the deck chair attendant and he stopped laughing and walked away. (laughs) After all this excitement, it was finally time to go home. Derek walked back down to the beach and packed everything up, ready to carry back to the car. The noisy family that had been terrorising each other all day were being loaded into several police cars. Molly was too tired to help with the carrying after the effort of buying ice creams, so Derek staggered along like a human buckaroo. The journey home was just as eventful. There was a bad smell in the car coming from Colin's backpack, which he wouldn't let anybody near. But this all paled into insignificance when halfway home, Betty sh- herself and everybody suddenly (laughs) remembered she was dangerously lactose intolerant but on the plus side with all the commotion no one seemed to notice Derek mount the pavement and run down the traffic warden everybody agreed it had been a slightly disappointing day at the seaside but one they would never forget the next day Derek bought a new car after dumping and setting fire to the old one Betty is back on solids now Colin still won't let anyone near his backpack There's talk of going to the zoo next week. Derek has yet to commit. The end. It's a lovely story. Uh, You might have to remind me to censor out something. Hello, Dad. (laughs) Because uh, we've said there's no swearing in the podcast. Oh, s*** isn't a swear word. Oh, now we've got to do it again. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's a lovely story. It felt a bit too familiar. What? But it, it was Derek and Molly... And their kids, Fanny, Betty and Colin. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see where... You can't see it being anything no, too similar. No, no, absolutely not. So, after that, lovely story from you. Did you like that? I did like it. I thought it was great. Now, just to wind us down a little bit, I've got a uh, a book for you. As as we're doing all of these the stories, aren't they? Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed so far. Yeah, no, I've got the theme of it, yeah. My last one. Now... This one is it's kind of a pilot because sometimes it's 
it's the first of a possible series of children books. Okay. And this one's called Tommy the Tuna Fish. Nice. Yeah. So, do you want me to start? Yeah, please. Tommy the Tuna was a happy fish. He loved swimming across the ocean with his friends, Tim, Tina, Tucker, Tanya, Taylor, Tyler, Toby, Tilly, T- Tabitha, Tia, Ted, Tegan, Tiana, Tallulah, Tara, Tess, Torin, Travis, Tristan, Tor- Troy, Tahir, Tamid, Tamanique, Tammy, Tate, Tayton, Ty, Tamar, Tanisha, Tao, Tariq, Tasmin, Tasha, Tay, TJ, Terence, Terry, T Teabag, Tin Can, Top Cat, and Mi- Mr. T and T-bag. Brian. <laughs> okay, go on. And Brian. And Brian. There wasn't much to worry about in the ocean. Yes, there are things like sharks, squid, scuba divers and the fear of drowning. But none of these scared Tommy and the tuna team much. What did scare them was the legend of a woman named Annette. None of Tommy's Uh, friends had seen Annette. (laughs) But rumours crossed the waves of the disappearance of entire schools of fish due to the dreaded Annette. It was a... It was just... (laughs) It was a day just like any other. Then screams began. It turned out... That the performer and Cray icon Craig Dayfish was in town oh and doing God. performances <laughs> at the H2O, which is a huge arena in the capital city of the United Findom. Oh, very clever. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy had tried to get tickets, but they had sold out. He was sad. The end. Well, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, what you've done there is you've you've uh, cornered the market of everybody beginning with a name of T, which their kids would love, and Brian, anybody called Brian, if there is anybody called Brian anymore. And Mr. Um, T. Um, I like the H2O arena. Yeah, H2O arena. Um, but unfortunately, you, you brought in a character, uh, I I have a real issue with Craig David, and even... No, uh, that, that was Craig Dayfish. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, even even that just he's irritates a, he's me. He's a crayfish. So I won't be buying this book. He's a crayfish. Until you write him out immediately. He's a cray icon. <laughs> yeah. He is a cray icon, is he? Yeah, because he's nice. a crayfish. Um, what was he doing on Wednesday? Um, <laughs> he's having to work through it now. Um, no, so, no, no, I like that. I like that. So Thanks. the next one is going to be all the S's as well, is it? No, because this, this is Tommy that they're all his friends. Because they're, because the thing is with friends with tuna, there's always a lot of them. Yeah. So he's got a lot of friends. Um, no, I just, yeah, and um, I liked. I, I thought bringing the Annette as a character. Like, I, I like think. that. I but like that a lot. You you think oh no, Annette's going to get them, but no, it was just Craig Davis. Uh, Craig Davis. Do you know I wrote a series of of uh, they were songs actually, uh, one of which was like Deborah La Zebra and 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 the like. So um, they might make Mike the one. I'll just come back on that one. They they may make an appearance at some point oh, in the future. I look forward it to that. It just reminded me of that. They are slight. You might have to bleep out a little bit more on those ones. Though. Oh, okay. All right. But anyway, I think I think that's it for this this week's it podcast. Is. Though it is, it's been a it's been a longer one so far, but I've certainly enjoyed it. Yes, yes. It brought back some memories of some. Older books and and some stuff we're looking at now, and, and brand new up and coming books as well, and obviously the stuff that was going to undoubtedly be published yeah. from the last ten fifteen minutes. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyway, I mean, as normal though, if you haven't already, uh, we have got our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can like and follow us on those. That would be really handy and helpful to you because you'll be able to see all the clips that come out and 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 such like that. All our posts. Um, also. We are on, I think, pretty much all of the podcast platforms now. Um, there's only a couple that had a, a couple of problems putting on. But what I'd say is with those, just subscribe to any your chosen podcast platform, whether that be Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Apple, iTunes, all those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Just subscribe and then will. that will automatically... Are they free? Yeah, all of them are free. Well, all of them? All of them are free. Okay. Some of them you might have to listen to adverts for and if you haven't paid for the the service yeah um but you will just, certainly find us on another free platform Acast as well yeah yeah um yeah put your fingers in your ears for the adverts um all be- free all free it's all free, <laughs> it's all free. It costs you a penny exactly um but yeah have you got anything else to add no i haven't no um enjoy that again roll on to next week whatever the subject may be I might try and give us a little bit more than a, a day's worth of notice if we've got to prepare anything for it but yep. yeah and uh, yeah thank you very much yeah. and uh, 
it's goodbye. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye.